Hello, I'm Dr. Veena, a senior consultant at the Department of Pediatric Gastroenterology at KK Women's and Children's Hospital. Today, I will be talking to you about ulcerative colitis in children. There are three parts to this talk. First, I will give you a brief introduction to ulcerative colitis. Then, I will talk about the treatment. And finally, strategies for families to cope with the disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic inflammatory condition affecting the gut. Its nature is relapsing and remitting, meaning that there are periods when the symptoms can become worse, followed by periods of good days, where the symptoms are either none to minimum. While there is no cure to this condition, the disease can be controlled with the use of appropriate medications. Inflammatory bowel disease can be classified into Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis or indeterminate colitis depending on certain features when we do our investigations. Ulcerative colitis presents less commonly than Crohn's disease and is characterised by continuous segments of inflammation in the rectum, which is the last part of the intestine, extending up to the large intestine or colon only. In Crohn's disease, any part of the gastrointestinal tract can be affected in a patchy manner. Another difference between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's is that in ulcerative colitis, only the innermost layer of the intestinal wall is affected, whereas the full wall thickness is affected in Crohn's disease. Now, since ulcerative colitis is a relapsing and remitting disease, children might have periods when the disease flares up and symptoms appear or increase in severity. A flare might be followed by remission during which there are no symptoms at all. This can last for months or even years, but symptoms typically return at some point. Inflammatory bowel disease was initially regarded as a disease of the Western world and was considered relatively rare in Asia up to about 20 years ago. The incidence of IBD has been rapidly increasing in Asia over the last 10 to 15 years, especially in developed and urban populations. Similar to other inflammatory diseases, the exact cause of ulcerative colitis is unknown, but research suggests that a combination of genetic, immunologic and environmental factors are involved. Foreign substances such as antigens in the environment may directly cause inflammation or they may trigger the body's immune system to switch on and cause inflammation in genetically susceptible individuals. Once the immune system in a child with ulcerative colitis is switched on, it may not know how to properly switch off. As a result, the inflammation damages the tissue, causing the symptoms of ulcerative colitis. As this genetic susceptibility is inherited, in some cases, other members of the family can be affected. The inflammation in ulcerative colitis always starts at the rectum and extends upward in a continuous manner. If the extent only affects the rectum, this is termed proctitis. In left-sided colitis, only the colon is affected on the left side, and in pancolitis, the whole colon is affected. It is important to know the extent of the disease as your doctor can then guide on the type of medications required to control the inflammation. Ulcerative colitis causes a variety of symptoms in children. Mild symptoms may present at first, while in other children, the onset of symptoms is more severe. Some common symptoms children may experience are abdominal pain or cramping, urgent or uncontrollable bowel movement, diarrhea, blood or mucus in the stools. Less commonly, they may describe feeling tired or fatigued easily with loss of appetite. Sometimes this may result in weight loss or nutritional deficiencies such as anemia or low red blood cells from significant blood loss. Some children may experience less common symptoms which are outside of the gastrointestinal tract. Some of these may include skin rashes, which are called erythema nodosum. They are typically painful and shiny red areas seen over the shins. 
Some children may also experience joint pain. Other organs that can be affected in children with ulcerative colitis are the liver, eyes and bones. Your doctor may also do screening tests to see if there is any evidence of involvement in these organs. There is no single test to diagnose ulcerative colitis, so your doctor will first rule out other likely causes of symptoms such as infection. In addition to a standard physical examination and a discussion of symptoms and family history, a combination of tests and procedures will be used to confirm the diagnosis. These may include laboratory tests of blood to detect any signs of inflammation, anemia or low protein, and stool samples to look for blood, inflammation and rule out infection. Testing may include some imaging studies, such as ultrasound, to look for any evidence of bowel wall thickening, and an endoscopy and colonoscopy, a camera test to look at the lining of the gut, during which time we will abstain biopsies, in which small pieces of tissue will be sent to the lab to evaluate for inflammation. These tests help to identify laboratory abnormalities, including anemia or low blood protein levels, identify areas of the digestive tract with active inflammation, and determine if there is a contributing infection or whether these features are indeed in keeping with inflammatory bowel disease. This slide shows you what we look for in the endoscopy. The two images on the left are images of a normal colon. What you can see is healthy tissue with normal vascular markings. The pictures on the right represent what we see in ulcerative colitis. Here you can see swelling of the tissues with loss of the vascular markings with redness and ulcerations. Sometimes in severe cases, there may even be bleeding. The treatment for ulcerative colitis is complex and may be different for every child. There is no one-size-fits-all treatment for ulcerative colitis and children respond to therapy differently.